So welcome back aliens, this is Navin Reddy from Telescope Learnings and in this video we'll talk about annotations. Now annotations is something very new to Java. Uh, new doesn't mean that it is there, I mean yesterday it came but uh, it's there from a long time. Uh, so, it, so annotation was introduced in 1.5, Java 1.5. So if you have learned Java before that, you might have not heard about annotations. But after 1.5 we got this gift from Oracle we can use, I mean not Oracle but Sun, that we can use annotations. Now annotations are very powerful. Uh, let me just give an example of annotation. In fact, uh, if we talk about the advanced framework like Hibernate Spring, they all use this annotations to work with now. So either we can do configuration using XML or annotations, but everyone preferred to go for annotations. Let me give you some examples how, I mean, how it looks. We'll talk about in detail how to create annotations, we'll talk about uh, different aspects of it, annotation in the, in the coming videos, but in this video we'll talk only about how to use annotations. So uh, what we'll do is, let's say we have two classes here, one is class A and then we have one which is class B and as usual class A extends, I mean class B extends class A and inside this class we have a method which is public void show, okay, and here also will say public void show. So what we are actually doing is we are, so this method show overrides the method which is from A, right? So if I create the object of A now and if I, if I call show, of course it will call the method of A because we are creating object of A. But in case if I are creating object of B, it will call the method of B, right? Because the method of the method B overrides the method A, I mean the method of A. Uh, but let's say if if we have a very very big name here, we'll say show my data from last year database. So let's say this is my this is my method name and again we are doing the same stuff here. We are saying show my data from last year database so let's say we have this we have these two methods here and in this I'm printing so I'm printing let's say in A and here I'm printing in B and so we are expecting that when you call this method show my database okay so if I call this method now it should it should call the method of so it should call the method of Oh, we have an error here. Uh, what is the issue? Nothing. Okay. So if you call this method, it should call the latest method, right? So this method overrides the initial method. So it should print in B. But unfortunately, from this code, you can see we are getting the output as in A. It's because even if you are overriding it, it is it is giving you in A. It's because purposely I have made a mistake. I don't know how many of you have seen that but I made a mistake here. So this is a small b and this is a capital B, right? And this may happen when you write a code. So this is a runtime error, right? So runtime error are very harmful. Compile time error is something we can work with. So what we can do is we can write at override. So it is always better to use annotations here. So if you write at override, at compile time itself, it will say, hey, you, you're not overriding any method here because we don't have any method with this name in the class A. So you will get to know that you have made a mistake. And now you can see there is no error. So we can use at override annotation to specify that we are achieving over, uh, method overriding. Now again, this is helpful for two things. Uh, it, it will inform your computer or it will inform your Java that your intention is to override a method. It will also inform the other programmers. Let's say if somebody is somebody is saying your code and if you written at override, it specifies that your intention was to override this method, right? So you don't have to use external commands here. So this method overrides the earlier method. We don't have to do that, right? So it, it, it gives you that, it, it solves two problem of yours. One, it will check the compile time uh, stuff it will check your name has the same name as the previous name and it will also make sure that it will become a comment for the other other programmers okay so that's how that's how you use at override annotation this is one 
the second one is let's say in this class or in this method I'm using some I'm using a analyst and let's say analyst new analyst this is a topic of collection right so whenever you work with analyst normally we so if I if I create the object of analyst you can see we are getting a warning here this warning says analyst should be having a generic type so we have to make sure that we specify the type of value you are working with so you are working with integer now right so that was the warning there again uh, we are getting now there this is now we have a warning because of this obj because we are not using obj but the earlier warning was because of this integer so this was so the your array was not type safe that means if you don't specify the generic it will give you x it will give you some warning let's say i'm, I'm not concerned about the warning what we can do is here itself we can add one more annotation called as suppress warnings and you can mention don't check any any stuff that okay so you can write at uncheck uh, if I'm not wrong it is unchecked yeah so it is unchecked and you can see uh, it will not give you any problem when you compile this on your Okay, it is giving you a warning here but when you compile this on notepad it will not give you that warning now, this is a different warning here so if you want to if you want to remove that warning you can simply write add suppress warning unchecked so when you when you do this on command line you will get a better understanding of it okay this is one thing so this is one one of the annotation we can use uh, we have one more annotation if let's say if we have a method which is public void show and so earlier people used to use this method but now you have the new method which which you don't want others to use this method what we can do is we can write add deprecated so we, by writing add deprecated you are mentioning that don't use this method I mean this method is available for you but don't use it can you see that line there okay so if I try to use that show uh, method which is show it will give me a line can you see that and it says this method is deprecated so it's, it's better to not to use this methods so there are some internal annotations available inside Java this is three uh, we have one more which which was introduced in 1.8 if you want to create any interface let's say interface ABC and this interface contains only one method example void uh, void show if you have only one method here what we can do is we can write add functional interface and now in Java 8 we have this feature of uh, lambda expression as we, as we have seen in the series so if you want to achieve that we can use add functional interface this is also an annotation now the advantage of it let's say in by mistake if I if I put two methods here so it will give you error because you are making it as a functional interface which means you can have only one method and you are doing two you are giving two methods that's a compile time error right so it's always better to use annotations to uh, help and um, to, to be a good to be a better programmer right so that's how that's how we can use annotations but the question arises: how we can write our own annotations that is tricky right that will say in the next video so thank you so much make sure you subscribe the channel and like this video so that uh, I will be motivated to create more videos like this. Thank you so much.